Okay, so we're going to try to sketch some of these real quickly. Looking at, first off, we have a cubic function, which is odd. Uh, we have three real zeros, and we have a negative leading coefficient. So we know that we're going to have three real zeros. It's negative, so it means it's going to go down as x goes to infinity. Uh, and then the zeros, again, we put them in there. And I can see it has to go down because that negative leading coefficient. And then just connect the dots with the appropriate piece. Now, I could, uh, if I had points, I could figure out kind of how these extreme values work, but right now that's the only sketch I have. Um, if I had a quartic function, that's going to be 4, so the end behavior is going to be the same. It's positive. I have three critical points. All right, so the critical points are those, those highs and lows. Um, and so I want to think about what that looks like. Again, here's my critical points, 1, 2, 3, and those are going to be my values moving forward. Uh, so again, that sketch could obviously look different, but that's one way that we could do it. Um, we have no real zeros here in this, the way this is drawn because I have uh, no intercepts with my x-axis. Alright, we have what's called the remainder theorem, which goes back to division of polynomials and specifically synthetic division. But basically what it says, if we took some um, fourth degree polynomial and we divide it by x minus 5, and we wanted to see is that going to be a factor or not. And we have a synthetic division where we take the coefficients in front, so 1, 4, uh, negative 4, 5, and then we have to add 0, right? This is really a 0 at the end here. That's going to be our placeholder. And then we bring down the 1, and then we multiply and add. 5 times 1 is 5. Again, 9, 41, 205, 210, and then 1050. So that's my remainder. So I can rewrite this as these are my... Uh, the coefficients x cubed, 9x squared, 41x, and then 210, and then remainder 1050. And remainder is always written over the uh, divisor, and so we have x minus 5 on the bottom there. And so if we wanted to rewrite this, it looks a little strange, but if I multiplied by x minus 5 over here, these are canceled out. And I would get on this side my factor, right, and then plus 1050 because these two actually cancel out here. And we can see if I plugged in f of 5, so if I wanted to figure out f of 5, which down here is p of c, if I put in f of 5, I would see what's going to happen here, right? f of 5, well, 5 minus 5 is 0, right, times something, plus 1050, right? That would be 1050. Now, if I got out a 0, that would have meant there was no remainder. If there was no remainder, it meant there was a factor. And that's really all the remainder theorem is telling us, uh, is that if we were to figure out those values to be zero, then I know that it would be a factor. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be uh, the value at P of C is going to be, so if I wanted to figure out quickly what F of 5 would be, I would just figure out the remainder when I do the synthetic division. All right, good luck.